Well, good day there, boys and girls. Welcome back to another episode of Trap Lines and Inlines. It's a beauty day up in the bush today. You know it is, you know, it's uh, real close to zero. You know, it's warm, warm weather up here. You know, nice uh, late winter kind of weather. Anyway, we're up to something here pretty exciting today. I'm excited to get right at her, guys. And what we're gonna be doing today is building uh, a log skitter for an ATV for my quad. Now, what this is for, is dragging logs out of the bush and we'll be able to get into tighter areas uh, using a quad and uh, move logs around. We're gonna build it from scratch, do all the fabrication and work here. And I'll give you a sneak peek here of what it's gonna look like when we're all done. And uh, yeah, let's get right at it guys, I can't wait. Yeah, couldn't ask for a nicer day. We're working inside, but still, it's just, it's just nice to be out here at workshop. Okay, so just getting her cleaned up a bit. See, I got my new welder. It's running good off my generator. Of course, my helmet. Somehow got dusty here. And uh, got my grinder, my gloves, chipper, and uh, all my stuff I've been using. Now, this is what we're gonna be building this out of, is two inch by two inch square tubing. It's gonna make a really good heavy duty skitter for us. So uh, I got my cutlass. We're just gonna start cutting and fabricating here. So I just draw the lines on with Sharpie all the way around so I can see it from all angles when I'm cutting. But I just hold it in the vise, it makes for a nice place to cut with my cutoff wheels here. You can see I got a stack of them. So here are all my pieces cut, ready to go. Let's start tacking them together. It's fun, it's a lot of fun. I've already got all my calculations done and all the trig and such. It's just a matter of drawing it out and such. You can see on this one, so as you see I'm just running about a 12 degree angle there. And then these pieces are going to be, this is basically the frame, and we're going to be cutting this to put it there.
Okay, so we're gonna do some some uh, miter joinery uh, to build the arch on top on top of this uh, here. So when we're doing this, if we use the same kind of material, the same angle on each side, so they join together. You can see I've got this same angle cut. They'll join together about that. That way they match up perfectly. The distance is the same. The flat surface is the same. So you can see. This is my quick drawing I drew to do this arch. It's gonna be 26 inches wide and 22 inches high. Now there's just a little bit of trig here. I just did these drawings to scale and then measured angles. I'll show you how this ties together here in a sec. So I got it all welded up and that actually took quite a while but you know she's looking good here. We got to add all the pieces on now. So this is going to be our coupler and uh, it's just a small one, works with a 1 and 7 inch, inch ball, you can see how it functions. And it works on two inch or two and a half inch, but with the two inch, we got to use these spacers.
Okay, so I have this little hand winch. It's like 1,200 pounds uh, rating or something. It's from Princess Auto, and I think I regret that already, honestly. Like, they're just, the quality just totally went to shit there. Um, I even thought about buying a little better one. We shall see how she goes. I'm gonna have my cable come through, but you see, cause this angle, like I can't, I can't have this. I need to redirect and transfer this down a little better. I want it on the rollers. So I'm gonna have to actually install this at a bit of an angle, have it side on the rollers, and uh, that should work damn good. We just gotta figure out how to fabricate all this. So, uh, let's hear it, boys. This turned out well. I got her welded here and here around the outsides. It's welded. This, like the rollers itself is welded. It's all welded on the inside. It was hard to get in there and put good welds, but I welded the piss out of this thing. So I got this piece here. It's a two inch angle iron. And uh, I wasn't sure how many, I'll just start with these two slots. If I want more slots in here for different distances I can, I got some heavy chain. Now, that's gonna lock this in here. We're gonna wrap it around the log. It's not gonna make any sense to weld this whole thing, but I'll lay down a few welds and that'll work good. Okay guys, so I've been waiting quite a while here for these spindles. Now they're just a typical trailer axle hub, and this is for a 3,500 pound axle, uh, so it's more than overkill. What we got here is two of these and two spindles. We have to figure out how to strongly mount this because our thing is very strong. If we keep these spindles mounted on there good, it's gonna last really forever. And I know how I'm gonna do it. Took some thinking about, but these are my plans. How I'll cut, do this in three pieces and a triangle design here. And I can talk about it or I can show you.
So we do want to get these spindles lined up pretty damn precisely. Got it lined up. It sits exactly underneath our big arch support. I wanted to transfer all the weight from the lifting, you know, directly onto directly to the wheels. So guys, I honestly made the dumb mistake of assuming that on the stock wheel I was going to put on this that there would be no offset, that the center of the rim is the center of the wheel and the center of the tire. So my clearance here would be exactly half, but I just went and looked at the rims and it's actually got positive offset meaning that this side of the tire is bigger than this side so this is not going to clear which is okay it's a bit of a pain in the ass just means we're going to have to go back to my original design the pain in the ass is going to be getting this to fit how now that it's all assembled if we just originally cut out this diameter it would be a lot easier but it'll be okay we'll just get it done I've been getting some pretty decent buying at Canadian Tire. Quite often this Mastercraft Maximum stuff is not too pretty bad. Check this out. Good presentation too. I like how we're storing that. Got flap discs, polishing discs, everything. Real nice addition I thought. So right now, I want this 80 grit flap disc.
Nearly died. Oh yeah, she's good. Let's keep all this splatter off the bearing surfaces. I'm trying to weld the back of the spindle inside the hub, or inside the pipe, sorry, getting late, sun setting, long day, but really gotta reach in there. It's tricky, but I got her done, I got her done. Let's see where I welded this one. Okay guys, so now we gotta align this. Now, yeah, this is really actually quite tricky until we figure out how we're gonna do it and then it's really fucking finicky and it's just, it's just a lot of it. Now, this has to really be aligned a number of ways. One is, we need the tires, like the tires can't be like this and towed out or towed in. They gotta be the exact distance, the front of the tire to the front of the tire, back of the tire to the back of the tire. Now we have to do that independently here. And then also them to be in line with what's pulling it. So if you know this is what's pulling it, you don't want the tires in line but going out that way because you're gonna wear shit out that way too. So we have to line it up so it's perfectly that way as well. Okay, so it's getting tricky. Also, we have to level the hubs so they're level all before we put one tack down. So that gets a little bit tricky, of course. And then while we weld, we gotta make sure it doesn't move and that it stays true. So it's just, it really is a tricky son of a gun. But I figured out how I'm gonna do it and it just becomes finicky. You just kind of make it a science instead of a guessing game. <laughs> so I figured out it was pretty slick when I come up with this. But what I did here, I drew, it's really hard to see. I can see it plain as day, but it's gonna be hard for you to see. I drew a two inch by two inch line that I lined up exactly with the piece that's kind of the tongue or whatever of the trailer. So that line, that pulling line is directly here. So if we measure the front and the back to this line, instead of having to measure all the way over or anything like that, we're gonna be able to get this really good. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I'm gonna do it here, guys. Okay, so we'll take our axle and now the first thing I want to do here is see how level this is it's hard to get this level on the hub but it does work this hub is sitting like this so the easy way to do this is to put some shims under it raise it up now that naturally lifted the weight off of it and it's going to pull it the way we want it to go just a little more okay so there is exactly perfect this size angle iron has worked real nice for me it butts right up to the hub and to the wheel bolts here so this piece of angle iron is a straight line that we can measure from. It's exactly parallel with the face of the hub and where the wheel will be. I can just measure, bump by tape measure up to the end of the angle iron, come to my line, which remember is exactly in line with everything. In line with the other wheel, it's in line with how this will pull. So here I'm getting 20 and 3 eighths. I'm measuring quite a ways back. The further back you measure, the more precise it'll be. So we'll measure over here too. See I'm getting 20 and a half, 20 and 5 eighths. This distance is further, but it's actually got to come shorter. Make your adjustment, come back. This is 20 and a half, so I already know I moved this too far. 
And I actually go out of there. Perfect there now. Now this is where this is really going to get tricky and start taking a lot of time. Because we got this one perfectly lined up. But I've already bumped that one in the meantime and moved this around. So I can't so much as breathe on this to move it. Got to make sure they're all set at the same time. I can't tack one and then come to the other one in case I move this. So it's going to get finicky here, but we'll try and get her just right. I'm even walking just carefully here. She's mint. That's good, I know that's good. We'll tack the shit out of it everywhere and then well, piece at a time. Try not to fuck anything up. Okay, it's time to mount our winch. Now I haven't mounted the stuff we already drilled out uh, either because it's easier to just install it after we paint it here than try and tape it off. It looks better, like trying to paint something like this is just a waste of time. So I'm trying to think, so this is going to be here except 14 and a half inches higher up here. And that's actually going to be a pretty nice place to crank. Now well, that's our center line. Put a bolt here, a bolt here, and probably two here. It's hard to see this center line, but right there where they meet, we'll drill those out. Makes it easier to get that little drill bit started. here now I am gonna throw a quick slab of paint on this you know see what happens you know you we're gonna be using this thing in the bush and uh, it's just gonna get beat to shit honestly like we're gonna put it to work it's be, gonna be hitting trees no matter what we do it's gonna be hard for this thing to look good forever but we throw a coat of paint on it it'll really slow down it rusting and make it look nicer you see how much of the oils and dust and shit I'm getting off this, which will really, which will really help her paint stick. So we'll work away at getting her cleaned up. I, I ended up uh, wiping this down three times, and that's when I, you know, I thought it was clean. I wasn't getting as much oil off of it. You can see this has actually turned quite a gray color. Um, it's really taken the oil off, dulled it, cleaned it up nice, and that's what we want. Now here's kind of what's the experiment about this. Uh, painting bare metal, you can't just use a regular paint. You need a self-etching primer or something to adhere to the metal to give you the surface to paint on. I'm gonna try this stuff. It has good reviews. I've never used it before. And it says, you know, use on bare metal surface, can be used on minor, on, on rust too. That's why it's called a rust check. It has good reviews. It's a flat black. It's simple. I wanted to try it out. I thought it would be a good approach to this uh, project if it does what it is in fact supposed to do. Time will tell.
first coat is looking just awesome. Nothing like a flat black, man. That looks sharp. Uh, it's a very light coat. I found that it ran easy, probably as expected, going on bared metal. So I kept it, kept it light so it wouldn't run bad. And we'll do a couple more coats, but looking real good so far. We'll let that sit a day. Okay guys, so I needed a good way to pull this. Now, I built this thing to have a lot of clearance. It's got big tires and it's got a lot of clearance. I don't want, you're driving over the bush. You don't want it high centering on everything. And I built it so it's gonna be 20 inches high, which is higher than your standard trailer. And a big reason for that too is I can pull it easy with, with my truck and it'll pull good and I can just put a normal hitch on the truck. It's gonna pull easy. And because I want to use it on my truck quite a bit too, probably is going to be the thing. But to get the quad and get narrow and get into the bush to get the trees out is what's really going to make this useful. I was at Princess Auto. Now, I don't like Princess Auto. It's a piece of shit, all of it. But this was a good deal. Um, you know, it's going to be so much more than plenty strong enough for this thing. And I like it a, for a few different reasons. It's actually a pretty sweet little deal here. This was only like 50 bucks. I was thinking, I think you can buy one uh, to just bolt on here. We'll try this, it was such a good deal. But what it does is it just bolts on. Make sure we got this going in straight here. Motherfucker nearly drowned. Yeah, so this thing is cool because one, it extends this thing out to where it should be. This is way too recessed, and then these tires are actually an interference. That puts this out here. I guess this hook is useful too. And then we can also put a ball hitch in there as well. So all this shit for 50 bucks, eh? Not bad at all. And it also comes with two hitch and ball. I would never use this on any of these fucking Princess Auto anything. Only on this, you know, like I would not use this, these fucking things on anything of importance. I don't trust them at all. These are big long ones I'm realizing and they want me to put them right through, I think, but that's not what I want to do. But what I think I want to do is raise this to there. 20 inches right on the dot. That's perfect. You can see how all this has pushed, pushed it out so I got more clearance, more room to back up. This is gonna be perfect. These balls are not the right uh, size for this. They are the right size for our, the hitch that come with this thing. But this is pretty cool, hey? Eh? I actually ended up doing four coats. The first two went on lighter until I kind of built that base. And then I put two heavier coats on and let them dry really adequately. We'll just spray it down here quick and, and Clean up. So we got all our hub components. We'll just prepare them here. First thing I'm gonna do is pack these bearings. So we got our bearing grease here. Get a good, good chunk there on our hand. Just, just pack these bearings here now. I'll get some bearing grease along the race here too. You can see. And we'll drop this bearing right in there. Just taking my seal here and I'm putting some assembly lube uh, to lubricate the seal. We're just gonna take some grease and stuff and put it around the outside. Our seal is going in like this now. 
Now we'll see if we can get that seal started not too cockeyed. Take your block of wood. Going good. Put her in flush. Okay. Down with the hop. Bearing in the front. Cool. Now we put the washer and nut on here. So I'm just setting this. So you can see I'm just setting the tightness of this here now. Torque it down to 50 to, to really set the bearings and get the seal all the way down and spin it so it gets down as far as it's supposed to go. And then I loosen it off so that it's not too tight, just hand tight. Get a good and snug, put the cotter pin through so it doesn't loosen off. Then these dust caps, maybe it was just the other hub, but it sure didn't go in worth a shit. This one is. That other one was tricky. But now, make sure she's not loose. Beauty. So now the hubs are on both, the, both sides here. Throw some Loctite on this too. And then I got lock washers. And that's because this material is likely to yield, like the square tubing is likely to yield when I tighten it down. Fuck off. just barely came out of there so instead of buying expensive trailer tires or anything like that what I just ended up doing is stealing these off the ramp charger now I did that for a number of reasons one is like buying buying trailer tires you know that's quite a bit expensive if it's 150 200 dollars you spend three four hundred dollars on tires one I don't want to do that I have these tires that were on the ram charger and the ram charger isn't moving. I'm just done with it. So I take these off there. I did have to look a little further to get the hubs that were five by five and a half bolt pattern. But I think that's the way to go on something like this. Why not use these ty big tires which are a way better quality, a way better ply than a trailer tire or use a turf tire that's also expensive. But, and also you gain all this clearance Look how much clearance I got. Look how high this thing's gonna sit off the ground by using these big tires. And you can find them used, whether it be used trailer tires or used truck tires, far cheaper than buying new shit or, or little turf tires I've seen on these things that puts them way low on the ground. Cordless impacts make the world go round. I'm 
motherfucker. And this thing sure looks mean with these big ass tires on her here. Look at this thing. Sure is muddy around camp. The frost hasn't come out yet. So it's just all sitting around here. <laughs> Fuck yeah, that's cool as fuck, hey? Uh, the only thing is it got wide using these big tires. It's a little bit wider than the quad. It got wide. I could have done a little bit less clearance. But you can see my protection bar is perfect. But I made it big enough it can haul a tremendously large log, like a 24 inch log. So that was, I made it so you would probably never find a log for me that would be too big for this, but the compromise is a little extra width. Maybe something you would change, you know, like designing these things can be tricky. There's a lot you just don't know quite yet. Let's get this quad out and try it out. Two fifty. Time to hook up this beauty. Yeah, <laughs> that's mint. That's so mint, boys. Let me tell you. That is cool. Check this out in a second. <laughs> Don't have to worry about clearance. So I bought a shitload of chain, heavy, heavy, and galvanized. So much past overkill, it's not even funny. I'm trying to figure out how much I want on here. Far better to have too much than too little. You never know. Like that's enough to go all the way to the ground. And I think I want to cut a bit extra and be able to wrap it around the tree if I want to. That way when we're hauling a log any distance, instead of all the weight being on her hand winch, it can be on the chain, which is a much better option. I quickly found a weak spot to my design. <laughs> I'm gonna have to reinforce this. This is a very small amount of metal for the amount of weight we are using. I just broke it. I'm gonna have to reinforce this, but that's no problem. Okay guys, so I'm out here in my woodlot where I felled some of these nice big old poplar trees that I'm gonna use here. And uh, it's going good so far. So we're just figuring out how to use this thing. Look at the size of some of these beauties. That's just beauty lumber. Okay, now the first thing I realized is the way I had the hitch set up was not adequate because right where it bolts together, there's very little metal and I probably stressed that torquing the shit out of it. What I did is I reinforced this both ways. I welded it back together, used some scrap metal to weld it back together, put longer grade eight bolts through there. So that's working good so far, first couple logs. Here's the thing though, like some of these, how big of a tree is this? Like it's a huge tree. Trying to skid something like this, a big green log, it's gonna be really hard on my little quad. So what I've decided to do, because they have to go such a short distance, is cut them into the distances I want to skid them. And that's been working real good here. So like this here is a 12 footer, it's a damn big log. We're gonna try and see if we can get her skidded out here.
So not often would you have to do that, but the stumps are blocking off this and I didn't roll it. I just trying to demonstrate how damn nice it is to have those big clearances to be able to drive it over there, those big tires. It's a real treat. It's been really moving around good in the bush. Here's another good example. It's just a lot easier to move something around in the bush when you can drive it over things. Like, look at this. This is a huge stump yet. I'm gonna be able to skid this log right over top of the stump, no issue. Okay, here's the demonstration. Now, the more you use these kind of things, the better you get a feel for them and the better you can get things going. I've only skidded a couple, so bear with me. But so far, I only have good things to say about this. I'm loving it. You can see how much room we have here. Maybe it is even a two bit, a little bit too big, a little bit too wide. Maybe I could have come closer, but oh well. So we'll hook the winch up, lock it in place. But I do not want the weight on the winch. It's just gonna wear the winch out. Hook it around, simple. Okay, now we'll put the weight on the chain. And I wanna leave this undone because if this rope loosens, I want this to loosen as well. I do not want any weight on the winch. So you can see, she's ready to go. Let's try moving her guys. But this clearance, that's sure one thing I did right. Big old tire. So it would have been much better to do this on the snow that's uh, to keep the logs clean. We are gonna get a bit of dirt and shit on them, which isn't the best if we're gonna saw them. Now the problem I had is there was so much snow the quad would get stuck. Like you see this pile behind me? It's just melted enough that I can drive through it. But yet still the stuff further back would have been muddy. So the, I wasn't able to get my quad in there without getting stuck because the snow was inconsistent. Like there was big patches and then muddy. But the time to do this is early winter, cut them and kill them when there's a little bit of snow and the ground is frozen. But you don't always have that luxury and we'll just make the best. Now look at how beautiful this works, guys. Like honestly, this is top notch. I'm just having a blast. But here's what we do. We lock in the winch. We crank it up to release the pressure off the chain. Take the chain. Take the slack off. I put these clips for the slack. Snap that in. Then we just release the winch. However fast. That's maybe a bit fast. Pull our cable out. Leave the slack. So we're not a, like that's just top notch. Right on, guys. See how this kind of goes, just playing around, getting a feel for this thing, you know. See if we can winch it up over here. It's a pretty big log. What I should do, leave this quad in neutral. Yeah, that's a good practice, leaving neutral so the quad can move with its root. Learn as we go here, friend. Yeah, I was dragging too. I didn't have them cut all the way through uh, and they got hung up here. See, the ground is kind of slippery and my little quad on the incline, I kind of got stumped there and couldn't make her any further. Yeah. 
This is a big old log. Bit rotten though, so we'll see what we can do with it. I think it gets better. It does get better. Oh fuck. Really have to reach around this big beauty. Well guys, that sure turned out excellent. I had a lot of fun uh, using it and uh, I think it's really turned out well. Everything, lots of it has really fallen into place nicely. Really moves around the bush good. It seems to work good, it's getting solid. And uh, it's really just turned out excellent. So I'm really happy. And I think it made a pretty decent video, so I hope you guys enjoy that. Now this was actually my first ever fabrication project. I've never done anything of comparable like I just got that welder and it was what money well spent let me tell you and this was my first kind of undertaking now I have enough building experience and um, fixing experience that it all is it's so nice because it all translates over like building experience and this project and getting experience with this fabrication and building it translates into other aspects like carpentry and vice versa you know like it just it's just across the board so it's really nice and uh, i really enjoy learning now it's going to be used for skidding logs and uh, we're going to use the logs for uh, building and stuff now it really what everything is becoming here hopefully is one step closer to log building uh that's kind of my motivation here now i want to get started on some practice uh right straight away and i will use the log skitter for that and we're just working our way getting experience working with wood and moving logs around all that stuff is all going to be very useful uh, for us friends in our endeavors now in regards to the skitter like what you'll see on many of the skitters uh, and haul or log haulers uh, Comparable is they have another set of wheels on the back that hooks up to the end of the log Now that would be excellent to haul the log any kind of difference Distance sorry now I didn't build that quite yet because I was not sure if I was gonna do need it because when I'm going through the bush there and narrow bush it's okay if the log hits the side and rebounds back, but if the wheels are catching, I don't know how it would work in the bush, but we may look at that further as a future project. Another thing I'm thinking here, I don't know if I'll get to it because it's not too big of a deal and it's working great as is, but I seen one hooked up with log tongs instead of wrapping the cable around on the winch and I thought that was damn slick and I wish I would have seen that before I built it but essentially you just go around the logs you lift it up there's no going all the way around you don't have to roll a big log so I think that would be nifty but other than that guys it's right on you'll watch us put it to good work here as we're playing with logs and lumber here and working out building stuff so hope everyone's just doing just great guys and uh, all the best to everybody